today we are going to look at the regulatory framework. One thing you need to note is that we have conceptual framework and we have regulatory framework. They are different things altogether. Okay. So today our focus is just going to be on regulatory framework. In subsequent lessons, we will look at what conceptual framework and what constitutes the conceptual framework of financial reporting. So today I'm just going to look at the regulatory framework. Regulatory, we are just looking at what? The laws that govern the preparation and presentation of what? Financial statements. We are looking at the laws or the, the rules or the practices, the conventions, the, uh, what is the name? The norms that govern the preparation and the presentation of what? financial statements. So we are going to look at the regulatory framework. We are looking at the scope, the rules that is very, very important. Okay. But the first thing is, why regulation? Why should we regulate the preparation of what? Financial statements. Why should we regulate it? So that is, we can say the purpose for the regulatory framework. So the first one is to give end users or to provide for end users relevant and faithful information for their economic decision. That's the first one. So we are looking at a situation where we provide relevant and faithful, you know, information to end users for their what, to use it or useful to them for what, economic decision making. So the regulation is very very important. The second one is that it will. So the first one providing relevant and faithful. information to end users. That is why the, regulation, the regulatory or the regulation of financial um, statement preparation is very, very important. The next one has to do with, um, so it will help us to compare, to compare the financial statement of one company to the other, or the financial statement of one particular period with the previous period, with the other period, or a financial statement of a country to, with other, countries. So the regulation is very, very important. That is the second one, to compare. And the third one has to do with a check, to provide a check on accountant so that they will not go and um, prepare any creative accounting. Creative accounting is when they man, uh, manipulate the figures in the financial statement. So it's very, very important for the regulation of uh, preparation and presentation of both financial statements by entities. Now, we have three rules that regulate the preparation and presentation of financial statements. We have three rules. We have the first one to be the international accounting standard. And then the two we have laws or rules in the company. So we have laws. Let's say laws, rather. Let's use laws. So the third one has to do with rules in relevant stock exchange. Stock exchange market. So the international accounting standards, you will look at it, that will be the next chapter we will be looking under the regulatory framework. So, international accounting standards, they are the standard that is being set by a board. Okay, it's being set by a board and it has been adopted by almost all the countries in the world today in their preparation and presentation of what their financial statements. So, very, very important. So, the laws or the rules. Or the regulatory, the regulation that is governing the preparations are three in number. We have the international accounting standard, or sometimes we just call them the accounting standards. And then we have laws. Now, laws vary from one country to the other. Remember, accounting standards are the same for each geographical jurisdiction. So, whether you're in Ghana, you still have to adapt the same accounting standard. If you are using maybe PPE, IS16 in Ghana here, a company in US or maybe the uh, United Kingdom can also use the same PPE. But when it comes to the laws, the laws vary from one 
country to the other. For instance, here we are being regulated, or the preparation of our financial statement is being regulated by our Companies Act, which is Companies Act 1963 Act 179. So, Companies Act 1963 Act 179. So, that is what regulates the preparation and the presentation of financial statements. The last one has to do with the rules that are relevant in the stock exchange market. This one simply means that if you are a company and then you are listed on the stock exchange, there are some rules that the stock exchange will, it will, will give you or will prescribe for you in your presentation and preparation of your financial statement. And those rules will be considered when you are preparing your financial statement as an entity. That is the rules in relevant stock exchange market. In Ghana, for instance, the companies don't usually have rules that is being prescribed by the stock exchange because the companies could give them the criteria and the conditions under which they should prepare their financial statements. So that is it for the law that regulates the preparation and presentation of financial statements. Let's go a bit deeper into international accounting standards. International accounting standards. The International Accounting Standard was established in the year 1973. So, they were established in the year 1973. And then the first accounting standard, the first International Accounting Standard was issued in 1975. Was issued in 1975. And by then, because of its complication, another board used to interpret it. And this board, we call them the Standing Interpretation Committee, the XCI. So the first standard was issued in 1975, and it was being interpreted. So when, when they issued the standard, it was being interpreted by the Standing Interpretation Committee. Very, very important. All right. So that is just a brief. This international accounting standard. Now. One thing you are supposed to note is that they were having a board. Okay, so we have the International Accounting Standard Committee. So they establish or they come up uh, out with what new standard or they issue or establish what new standard that's the International Accounting Standard Committee. But after 2001, 2001. The International Financial Reporting Standard has become the paramount or the paramount uh, organization or group that is responsible for issuing an interpretation of what financial standards. So, as of 2001, but before 2001, we are having international accounting standards. So, as of now, we still have some some of these standards in the system, but they are being revised by the IFRS, which started from 2001. So, the composition that we have now is, we have the highest board, the highest board, which is the IFRS Foundation, and then it will come down to the I International Accounting Standard Board, and then this one comes to International Financial Reporting Standard Advisory Committee, and then we have International Financial Interpretation Committee. So we have these boards that come together. These four boards come together. Boards come together to, or groups come together to issue or revise the existing standards. All right. The IFRS is composed of 22 trustees, 20, uh, 22 trustees. We have six from Asia, we have six from Europe, and we have six from America. We have one from Africa. I don't know why we are having only one as an African. And then we have three from any other country. So if you add this, you are going to get 22 because this will give you 10. So 
create from they are to selected from any area. Okay. Now, Ghana as a country adapted or they prepared their financial statements in accordance and compliance with what international financial reporting standard. But they started the adoption in 2007. So Ghana started preparing its financial statement in accordance with international financial reports. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, international financial standard in 2007. Don't forget about that. Now, one thing that you are supposed to note: before the introduction of these IFRSs, there were some accounting principles that governed the preparation of the financial statement, and we call them GAAP. Generally, we have generally accepted. Sorry, generally accounting accepted principle. So generally, is it generally accepted accounting principle? Sorry, generally, general, general. So general account, uh, accepted accounting principle. So we have, we call them GAP. So we have the US GAP, we have the Ghana GAP, we have the South Africa GAP, and so. So these principles were individual. So every country and what its principles in the preparation of their financial statement. But it were creating a whole lot of issues. So they have to harmonize the system by coming out with these international financial reporting standards. Okay. So this is very, very important. Now that we have known this body, these boards that help in what issuing the standard, let's look at the process that they go through to issue a new standard. Very, very important and it's very, very examinable. The process that they go, they go through to issue a new standard. But before then, don't forget, currently we are having about 40 accounting standards, both the IES and then IFRS. Both IES and IFRS. So they are being, some are being revised. Okay, the old one which is the IES are being revised into the IFRS. For instance, initially we are having revenue as IES 18, it has now been revised into IFRS 15, revenue um, from uh, contracts with what customers. Okay. Don't forget also that aside this board, there are some other board that also help them in the issuing of what accounting standards. We have about two of them or three. We have the Global Preparers Forum. So Global Preparers Forum. We also have the Financial Crisis Advisory Board. So these two help the board in the releasing or in the issuing of a new standard. These people are being funded by, or this particular group, they are being funded by non-governmental organizations. So they are very, very highly independent. Okay, all right. I want to talk about the International Financial Reporting Standard Interpretation Committee. So the name goes, so they interpret. As an now, we still have some in the system. So if you have IS 16, they go with what the interpretation. I, IS 19, the employee benefit, they come with what some kind of interpretation. So those things are just for knowledge basis. But the most important thing in the process, they can ask you in exam situation, what are the processes for establishing or coming out with what a new accounting standard? Very, very important. So the first one, the process of Developing new accounting standards. So process. So we have about seven of them, but sometimes they are new processes, but sometimes they may jump them. Okay, they may jump one process. So the first one is that a subject is identified as what important or appropriate for a new or a revised standard. So the first thing is that they have to identify a subject. Which is what appropriate or being appropriate for a new or what uh, for a new or revised standard. So a subject must be what uh, must be identified. The second one is that the national accounting rules, the national accounting rules, and then practices. The national accounting rules and practices are studied. They are studied, and then. The uh, views are exchanged, the views are then exchanged, or then, they then exchange views between what accounting or standard 
settings. Okay, so after they telling the national accounting rules and then practices, then they share views between what the accounting settings or standard settings. Okay, the standard, the second one. So national accounting rules and practices are steady, and then views are exchanged with what accounting settings. That the first, the, th the second step or the second process. Then the third one has to do with they form a group. In this group, we call them the advisory group. So they form a group called advisory group. And what's their purpose? Their purpose or their role is to advise the IASB. So uh, advisory group is formed to advise the uh, International Accounting Standard Board. Because the board is responsible for the establishing of the new standard. The board, you see that they are the second in command here in the rank. Second in command. So the group is formed with the advisory group to advise the IASB. The third one is that after they have uh, provide group to uh, they have established a group to develop the IAB. Then the fourth one is that they issue a discussion document. We call it DD. So they issue a discussion document by who? Who issue the discussion document? The discussion document is issued by the IASB for public to comment. What is the purpose for the discussion document? Is for the public to, to comment. So a discussion document is issued by the ISB for what the public to comment. So after they have reviewed the discussion, the discussion document, then the fifth one, they issue another document they call um, exposure drafts. Exposure. I think it's like exposure drafts. So the, remember, the fourth one is that they issue discussion documents for the public comment. And the next one is that after they have considered the comments by the public, they then issue exposure drafts to the public. This also serves the same thing for the public to, to comment. And then the sixth one is that they consider the comments that are being provided in this DD and then E. So they consider the views and the comments that are provided in the discussion document and then exposure draft. So at this point, they verify or they consider whether they should go for a public hearing or they should go for a field uh, test, a field test, or they should go for uh, issuing of a revised exposure draft at the sixth level. So they consider the views and the comments that are being put, uh, you know, being received from the Public through the discussion document and then the exposure draft. And then the last one, which is the seventh one, a new approved standard is established. Newly approved. So that means a standard must be approved before it is what it is being established. So approved standard by the board is then established. That is what the seven processes that the board goes through to come out with what a new accounting standard that we have in the system. So thank you. In the next uh, video, you will look at the conceptual framework. So this is the regulatory framework. You also look at what the conceptual framework. Please don't forget to subscribe for more of these interesting lessons. Thank you.